Here we are, Monmouth Beach, New Jersey. I'm with my friend Leo, and we are gonna catch some fish for dinner tonight. fantastic morning of fishing with Leo. Now it's time to head back to the kitchen and learn his take on how to fillet a fish. We are back from the beach, but Leo, we kind of struck out, didn't we? It happens. That's why they call it fishing and not catching. That's my canned answer when people say, you didn't catch anything. Well, it happens from time to time. It's all good, because you know what? You did not strike out yesterday. That's you right. caught these beautiful black sea bass, and I would love to learn how you fillet them. Okay. We're gonna get two fillets out of a fish, right? Correct, two fillets out of so each four, fish. So four total. Four, you'll have four fillets total. All right, let's get to it. Okay. So typically what I do, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to lift the, uh, the fin. All right. And we're going to make a diagonal cut like so. All right. And you're going to feel and stop right down on the spinal column of the fish. Stop it there. Right. Don't go through. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now... I take the tip of the knife and I could feel it resting right on the um, spinal column mm -hmm. and I push the fish, push right down along and come out like so. There you go. Angle it more, hold the knife back like, there you ah, go. And now okay. push, you'll see it slides right down, right along the Got spine it. of the fish. Yes, okay, love it, lovely. There All you the way go. to the tail. Okay. Perfect. Now that you've done that, um, you're going to get your thumb in there, and now you're going to again slide right along. Kind of the other direction. The other di direction. So you're really not leaving any meat um, on the bone there. And you could actually, you want to hear that knife. You hear that? Yeah. Going against You're the just actually rib cage? Is that the right, rib cage? That is the, actually it's the spinal column oh, right. of the fish. Awesome. And then you're going to see the, the actual spinal cord. I see it. So we're halfway done. Then okay. what I do is I pretty much um, start from the back here and, and come down. And you can see the fish is pretty much filleted. And then this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the back fin or what's technically known as the anal fin okay. and I will push the knife out and slide it right back and cut through. Oh, that is gorgeous. Okay. Okay. Let me try. Have sure. I gone far enough? Yes. So now you're going to okay. go that way this is my anal and fin. push right to there. Okay. Now slice down and a little on an angle like that. Okay. So you there you go. So I'm not wasting any Perfect. meat. Perfect. And now f just flip it open like so. Okay. Now this in here mm -hmm. is your rib cage. Okay. That's the part that's the boniest part of the fish. Okay. So what I will typically do, because people do not like bones in their fish, right? No. <laughs> I'll actually cut above and I, I will leave a little bit of meat on there because uh, I don't like eating bones. You're right. So you actually just go back slice in it out. with tweezers yeah. and like deal with it later. Okay. And that's so, your that's your fillet. Oh, that is gorgeous. Okay. Just gorgeous. Okay. There you go. That's it. Now what you can do mm -hmm. is you can push in here and just cut back. Mm-hmm. Just watch your fingers when you poke through. 
Yes. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Great job. So what I do is I just do a little nick to, and I, I hold it down, and on a 45 degree angle, you're just going to ride your knife and keep tension on the skin, and then you could grab it. And look, here's your filet. Oh Completely my gosh. skinned. Skinned filet. Yep. So great. Oh wait, I should hold Grab this Grab this, right. And this just part. keep it taut and just push the knife back and forth and it'll come off. Perfect. Great job. Flip it over. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. And that's your Gorgeous. sea bass filet. Now the last this is thing. This the beginner way and this is the pro way. But you know, we're getting there. I feel, I just want to feel, you know, you'll feel if you have a bone in there. Okay. Or right. not. And no bone. No bone. I'm good too. No right. bone. Perfect. Woo! Cheers. Now. We need Coronas with lime. Yeah. That'll come later. That'll come later. So what we're going to do is um, just rinse, because you could see there's a couple scales. We'll rinse yes. the scales. Okay. You could put it on either a plate or a napkin and just let it, um, you know. Um, really dry. Dry a little bit or just put it in, in a bag until okay. you're ready. Keep it in the refrigerator or on ice, either or. That's All right. It. All right. Well, I am going to do just that. Then uh, I think we should hit the beach for a few hours, not to fish, but maybe to do a little uh, <laughs> swimming. Come back and we'll prepare this with Leo's recipe. Can't wait to share it with you. What an incredible day I've had. Not only did Leo teach me how to cast and to fish from the ocean shore, but he also taught me how to fillet a sea bass in a beautiful way. And two recipes that I'm gonna teach you right now. We're gonna start with sea bass in foil. Uh, we're going to grill that uh, with breadcrumbs, um, lemon, garlic, and capers. Oh, and white wine, of course. Next, we'll move on to fluke, and we're gonna pan fry that and we'll move on to that in a little bit. Let's start with the sea bass. First, we need a good sized piece of foil. Our fillets are small, but we're gonna put two in the foil at once and we need to fit a whole lot of these toppings with it. Let's get started with some butter because what's better than starting a recipe with good salty French butter. I am going to be pretty generous uh, making uh, slices to create an island under the sea bass fillets, right in the center of my foil. Now, right before I place my fillets on top of the butter, I'm gonna add a little bit of white wine. So let's open up this um, beautiful bottle. We have a 2013 Crow's Hermitage. I don't always cook with such fancy wine, but I'm really excited. We're at the beach. Let's go, just go for it. And of course I'm using the most incredible tool, my flawless rose gold wine key. I mean, I even roll, wore rose gold eyeshadow just to like make sure this was noticed, but let's get started. And I'll teach you how to use it while, while we go. Um, you're going to cut under the lower lip of the bottle. I like to do a cut across the front, a cut across the back. Then I can always keep my label facing my guest, which is you, this evening. I am going to open the corkscrew and put it right down into the center of my cork. Then when I see about a half or a full ring, from my wine key visible above the cork. I'm gonna go ahead and pull from the first lever, then I go up to the second lever, and I pull from that lever until it feels like it's just about to pop out. Then I move to my the palm of my hand and I bring it the rest of the way out. 
always taste your wine before you serve it or cook with it. About one in 10 bottles could be flawed. And believe me, after running restaurants, it's true. Many wines are flawed. Usually just a smell will tell you if it's flawed. This is sensational. It's not flawed at all. Oh, it's so beautiful. I think I have to take a sip. Yeah, that's acceptable. We're gonna go ahead and pour just a splash into the foil. It's just about a tablespoon or so. It doesn't have to be that much. It's just allowing for some steam to come up into the fillets. Let's top it with two fillets. So that's one whole sea bath's worth of fillets into one foil. Next, let's add some more butter right on top of our two fillets. I'm using a gluten-free panko breadcrumbs, but Leo actually recommends Italian breadcrumbs. It's just that Jason can't is allergic to gluten, so I'm gonna try his recipe using just plain gluten-free panko breadcrumbs. Next, slices of lemon. I'm just gonna make, I don't know, maybe four wheels, which I will place right on top. And as it cooks, they will just melt their juices all over the butter and onto the meat of this um, fish. And then how beautiful is that? Now, because, you know what? Um, there's more. Let's add the Old Bay seasoning. Again, that will melt with the lemon juice right into the fish. Some capers just a sprinkling. Leo says to use the larger ones, so find the bigger caper berries that you can find, or capers, excuse me, and just a pinch of minced garlic. Now, because I didn't use Italian breadcrumbs and I used the plain breadcrumbs, I'm gonna add a little bit of Italian flat leaf parsley. Just a, a handful right on top, and how pretty is that? It will be equally pretty when we open it up after we grill it. Now to fold it, I am going to fold it just like a sandwich. Um, like if I was wrapping a sandwich for Fritz school lunch. So I bring the long sides together and then I roll it over a few times. It's kind of like a present on the side and I fold up. I want all the openings to be on the top side so that um, no juices fall into the coals and cause a fire and my fish to cook too quickly. All right, we've wrapped up one. Let's do the second one before we head out to the grill. All right, I've got the coals ripping hot. I am, and uh, no fire, just smoke. I'm gonna place these on until they're done. If you don't have a grill, that's also fine. Preheat your oven at 350 degrees. They'll be done in about 15 minutes. Let's go outside. Flawless Leo fish recipe number two. Are you ready? I am so excited and very ready. This is fluke, but we're gonna pan fry it. And the best part is that we're gonna serve this pan fried fresh caught fluke with a lobster aioli. To make lobster aioli, we need some lobster. I have two lobster tails here. You could also get a couple of claws. Um, which are lovely uh, and tender meat. Um, but we're gonna start with the lobster tails. 
the way to cook lobster tails, the way I do it, is just to steam them. So I have about an inch of water in a smaller Dutch oven um, that's boiling. Now that it's boiling, I'm going to add about a tablespoon of salt. And then I'm going to put a steamer basket in that water. And in the steamer basket, of course, is my lobster tails. So let's head over to the oven and then make this part happen. Voila. Okay, back to our uh, fish. I'm going to start the aioli actually before we get to the fluke. So uh, there's an important sweating step um, with the aioli. It uh, is five garlic cloves that I've minced, uh, salt, just a little bit and lemon juice. I'd say about two teaspoons worth. So I usually think of a, a lemon producing about a tablespoon and there's three teaspoons in a tablespoon. So about a third of a lemon. Uh, this I'm just going to let sit while I prepare the fluke and then we're going to strain it. But it's just going to marry its flavors together while we work and while our lobster is working. Okay, for the fluke, uh, we need to create a breadcrumb mixture uh, that we will rub the fluke through after we wash it in egg. Uh, and in this breadcrumb mixture, Leo says, he likes to use Italian style breadcrumbs. So I have that already on the plate. To that, I'm adding, I don't know, what do you think, Leo? Like quarter cup of Parmesan cheese, freshly grated, some black pepper, and some Old Bay seasoning, because why not? It just makes seafood taste so, I don't know, seafoody, like I'm at a shore house having a vacation on the beach. Um, I'll just mix that all together. Wow, it smells incredibly good. I can't tell you how satisfying it is to have fished this morning with Leo and now be cooking this incredible fish right here where it came from. All right, whisk some eggs. And it's a simple process. I am going to dampen each piece of fluke. This is actually half of a uh, filet. The fluke is a very flat, large fish with a big mouth. Um, anyway, the whole filet um, would be too large. In fact, Leo likes to cut this in, he said, three inch pieces. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I didn't mean to skip that step. So I basically took a half of a fluke and I cut it in half. It's dredged in the egg and the seasoning. I'm going to set it in my uh, bowl for, um, for frying shortly. All right, we have our fish coated. Um, we have our lobster going. Um, now we're going to head over to the stovetop. We're going to get some olive oil, which is a low temperature oil, but it works because I really want to fry this uh, fluke ripping hot in a cast iron skillet. Uh, Leo also likes to do this in an electric skillet outside so it doesn't fill his house with the smell of fish. Um, but I'm going to go cast iron. I'm going to do it right inside. Uh, with you. So let's head over to the stove and, and get that done.
first things first, I have my cast iron skillet ripping hot over the flame and I'm going to add some olive oil. A really good layer, like I'm gonna fill um, a little more than a, a few millimeters, um, but less than a centimeter of oil into the pan and let that start to smoke so that uh, the olive oil I know is just ripping hot. Olive oil is a low temperature oil. It burns very quickly. I already see smoke. I'm gonna add my fluke. That's the sound we wanna hear. This is gonna cook very quickly. So I'm gonna try and work really quickly. I definitely don't wanna crowd my pan. And it looks like the amount of fluke I have is going to work nicely into two batches. So here's my first batch. I'm gonna let that sit, trying not to move it too much unless you know something's crowded uh, for about two minutes. I wanna see these breadcrumbs get nice and brown. Let's take a peek. Look at that, gorgeous. One to two more minutes and these will be ready. I'm gonna pop them into a new clean platter uh, for serving. It's really important when I plate these that I do not stack them on top of each other. It's gotta go from me taking them off the skillet to the serving table. Jason is working on grilling the sea bass and we're about ready to sit down. And I don't want these to um, get less crispy and that's what would happen if I stacked them. For the second batch, I am gonna add more olive oil. Again, it's pan frying, but it's um, borderline deep frying. So I add that thick layer, maybe like four, five millimeters of oil on the bottom of my, uh, I have a 12 inch skillet uh, I let it get ripping hot. I see it smoking and then I add my second batch. The fluke is finished. Jason's finishing the sea bass. My girlfriends have made a salad. The table is set. Let's finish the aioli and sit down for dinner. So to finish the aioli, I am going to drain that mixture of lemon juice and garlic that I made into a bowl. I'm really gonna mash the garlic so that it um, is truly imparted in the lemon juice mixture below. To that, I am going to add uh, mayonnaise and a little bit of Dijon mustard. Old Bay seasoning. And last, but certainly not least, in fact, most important, we're going to add our chopped lobster tail. My favorite way to get the meat out of a lobster tail is simply to uh, crack the shell in half. If this was piping hot, like if I was about to serve it for making lobster rolls, I'd wrap it in a tea towel, but I've had it in an ice bath, so it's cold. I'm simply gonna put my weight um, on it and that breaks the lobster tail right in half um, or at least makes it easy to break open in half and pull out my meat in one beautiful piece. The lobster tail shells are a beautiful garnish so I am going to just keep them aside because probably when we head to the table it would be a great garnish or decoration at least for our table. Leo says it's kind of like chopping a tomato, <laughs> which I understand. Uh, if I was to make it for like a salsa or a um, guacamole accompaniment. So pretty darn small pieces. 
I'm going in one direction and then the other direction so that it feels like little bits. But it's quite a lot of lobster for our sauce. We have our aioli mixture. I'm adding all of the meat from the two lobster tails and I'm not being shy about letting that kind of saline lobster water that fell out from the cooking water to add into there. Mixing it all up, I'll put it into a nice serving bowl, a little nicer than this glass bowl. Um, I'll add some freshly snipped chives on top and invite people to enjoy it with their pan fried fluke. Let's head to the table. I'll go check on Jason, see how he's doing, but I think we're ready to sit down. What a day. This has been absolutely extraordinary. I think everyone's enjoying their meal. The fish is exquisite. Leo, you are absolutely flawless. And being together with all of you is also flawless. Cheers. Mm -hmm.